When this pick was made, no one was really all that shocked about the Cardinals taking Kyler Murray first overall. But what occurred in Nashville that night was a lot more unprecedented than people seem to be talking about. Arizona got their franchise guy for Cliff Kingsbury's air raid system. But the thing is, they also got their franchise guy last year by moving up into the top 10 of the draft to select Josh Rosen. Drafting Rosen that high and then trading him off to the Dolphins after just one season? Something like that's never happened before in the NFL. Rosen's the first, and he very well might be the last. After the draft last year, Josh Rosen told the media that nine teams above him made mistakes in passing on him. But Steve Keim, GM of the Arizona Cardinals, seems to have added his team to the list. With such a unique situation happening in Arizona, I feel like we need to take a second to assess the whole Josh Rosen saga, and what the future holds for him and his new team in the aftermath of this ugly breakup. Before we get into it though, make sure you're subscribed and have notifications on for this channel. I post a new video going in-depth on a new player or topic every single week, so you definitely don't want to miss out on that. Now let's take a look at what went so wrong for Josh Rosen in his first year that his team fell in love with another quarterback and shipped him to South Beach. Last year was a pretty bad one for the Cardinals, on a roster that was deficient in talent and a coaching staff that was deficient in coaching ability. The deserts of Arizona were certainly not the ideal ecosystem for a rookie quarterback, and Josh Rosen struggled. Thrown into the fire in just week three, through his 14 games, he threw for under 2,300 yards, 11 touchdowns, and 14 interceptions. It wasn't always pretty, or even close to pretty, and he made a number of mistakes, played inconsistently, and never really inspired a ton of confidence from the team or Cardinals fans throughout the year. But it was clear that he still had talent and a ton of potential. All he really needed was some guidance. Rosen saw pressure on a whopping 40% of dropbacks last season, as his offensive line ranked last in the NFL under pro football focus, only slightly higher than actual Swiss cheese. With a coaching change mid-season and instability and in injuries across the board, even an elite talent like David Johnson couldn't get things done in an offense that just couldn't get the ball rolling. Even still, Rosen was able to make NFL throws and showcase the talent that made him a top 10 pick in the first place, but he was always expected to be given a few years to develop before getting some major judgment on whether or not he could survive in the league. The flashes were still there, someone just had to find a way to sustain them in order to keep the offense alight. That's why when Cliff Kingsbury was hired after the season to be Arizona's next head coach, even though I wasn't terribly confident in his ability to be successful in leading an NFL team, I was at least excited to get to see him work with Josh Rosen. But that's right around the time that the rumor mill started up. Kingsbury had long gushed about wanting to be able to work with a certain player in particular, Kyler Murray. When Kingsbury was still at Texas Tech, he spoke extremely highly of him, even saying that he'd take him with the first pick of the NFL draft if he had the chance. As fate would have it, he'd actually get that opportunity. Pretty soon, it looked like the Cardinals were about to have an awkward situation on their hands. If Murray was selected, there'd be two top 10 quarterbacks on the roster, and only one of them would feel like there was any faith in them from the team who called their name. Though the Cardinals started to shop Rosen, no one was seeming to bite, and draft night quickly arrived without offloading their quarterback. While this was a tough situation for Rosen, who didn't even believe the team would select Murray until just moments before the draft began, I don't fault the Cardinals for wanting to take Kyler Murray first overall even slightly. He's an incredible talent, and if they feel he's the guy to best make Kingsbury's offense click, then taking him will be far more valuable than any of the top defensive prospects in the draft in the long term. Though Kime has certainly made some poor decisions when it comes to quarterbacks in the past few years, this is the last straw if he gets it wrong, so the confidence in pulling the trigger at 101 tells me they must have a pretty good plan with Kyler at the helm. Or at least I hope so. You Cardinals fans out there have suffered enough. What that meant at the time, though, was the two young, talented quarterbacks were now on the roster, with Arizona having zero leverage and an immediate desire to offload Josh Rosen, because even though they might get a diminished return, I can't imagine that kind of distraction from the press on each quarterback's every move is something you want to saddle your rookie coach and signal caller with. With all things considered, and how long the Cardinals were forced to hold Rosen due to an overall lack of interest, the deal they got in return wasn't terrible, but certainly disappointing considering the capital they put into trading up to get him the year prior. On day two of the draft, the Cardinals sent Josh Rosen to the Miami Dolphins for a second round pick at 62 overall and a fifth round pick in 2020. This is essentially a steal as far as the Dolphins are concerned, as it's a low risk, high reward deal if Rosen's able to prove that he's Miami's guy. This is what Rosen's cost to the Dolphins is over the next three years. It also includes a fifth year option, and it's gorgeous, since the Cardinals will still be paying off the majority of Rosen's front loaded rookie contract. It's a great deal, and despite the rumblings of coachability and character concerns with Josh Rosen, the way he took the trade in stride and kept everything professional and well thought out was extremely encouraging, no matter what Steve Smith yelled at us on live TV. And the decision to take the high road is something that should make Dolphins fans excited about what they're getting, especially at such a bargain price. But you see, 
As someone who thinks that Rosen is a talented player who had the misfortune of being thrown into one of the worst situations in the NFL last season, it frightens me that we might be looking at a deja vu scenario in just a year's time. Now before you call me out for jumping the gun, which I am for sure, let me remind you that despite the importance of great quarterback play to a team's success, even the best of them can't do it all on their own. And that's including the fact that Rosen is moving from a team that believed in him and is starting to rebuild itself, to a team that is comparatively paying pennies for him and is gutting everything in order to prepare for the years to come. The phrase tank for Tua has been popular in Miami over the last few months, and for good reason. Going across the board, the Dolphins have one of the weakest rosters in football. Brian Flores is on a guaranteed five-year deal, and a la John Gruden, pretty much anyone can be shown the door for some additional cap space or draft picks in order to help the rebuild out. The Dolphins had the second worst offensive line in football last year, with only the Cardinals being worse. And though the Dolphins' creative play design from a now defunct coaching staff was able to generate some receiving yardage, they still finished 30th in the league. That's without even mentioning that Rosen is going from a QB-centric offensive head coach to a coach who has spent nearly his entire professional career coaching defensive players. While I believe in the talent of Rosen, I think it's pretty damn likely that he's going to struggle. Another first year in a new system with a roster that isn't demonstrably better in any way at any position. And if the Cardinals were willing to take a player that they love the very next year after drafting Rosen at 10 overall, there's absolutely no reason I can think of for the Dolphins not doing the same thing if Rosen isn't able to light it up in this horrible situation, which would relegate him to the bench for the remainder of his contract most likely. This is especially true with the amount of draft capital Miami is sitting on next year to move up and take the guy they want, and that's assuming they don't already have the top pick with an awful regular season record, which is looking very likely at this point. With all of that said, it's not like it's all doom and gloom for the former UCLA standout, who's certainly still able to control his own destiny in Miami. The New England style system he's headed to is actually an excellent fit, and since Rosen needs to be challenged by his coaches similar to an Aaron Rodgers type, I think there's a good chance he'll be able to mesh in Miami. He's come out and said he's ready to compete and earn trust as a franchise quarterback. And with the journeyman Ryan Fitzpatrick ahead of him, there will certainly be a lot he'll be able to learn even after he gets a shot in the starting lineup, whether that's week one or sometime later. If he's able to play well for the Dolphins and prove that he's a worthwhile investment, even if they struggle as a team, he'd be far more likely to remain as their quarterback moving forward, as anyone who can throw an accurate pass to literally anyone that isn't the defense will be a welcome sight to Miami fans at this point. The chip on Rosen's shoulder is about as big as it's ever going to get, and at the end of the day, I hope he's able to do everything in his power to prove the doubters wrong and end up as Miami's franchise quarterback when we're looking back at this situation in a few years. The team around him is weak, just like the year before, but hopefully, with another season under his belt, he'll be able to correct the mistakes that plagued his rookie years and turn things around for himself in Miami. Because if a wake-up call is what Josh Rosen needed to really light up the NFL, I can't imagine a larger one than hearing Kyler Murray's name being called on draft night.